Hi, I'm Fiona Gomez. I'm the Academic Director at Cork English College. Um, Fiona, I'm going to start by asking you uh, about the challenges that the pa pandemic has posed in your school or in your classrooms there and what was that like? Um, so a lot of, like everybody across the world, there's been a lot of challenges. Um, I think um, the challenges have changed a lot also over the past seven, eight months. Um, initially, back in March, the biggest challenge was having hours to get everything online. Um, and the school wasn't ready at all for a digitalized world in an online world. So it was a scramble and it was very stressful. Um, then we had the challenge of coming offline and going back to face-to-face. -to -face, and that was, that was scary for everybody. It was scary for the staff, it was scary for the students um, and didn't know what to expect. And the, the lead up, it was like, it's like the lead up to Christmas when you're a kid, but in a negative way. Um, there was all this anticipation, you don't know what to expect. Um, but it wasn't a good feeling. When you're a kid, it was a, it was a good feeling. Um, but it, everything worked out fine. Once we went back to face to face, everything went really smoothly. Um, and because we had set up systems and structures over the previous months, it was easy to then have a digitalized classroom. Um, but then we had to go back into lockdown. Um, so telling that I think the biggest challenge in lockdown two is that the students were upset. They, they were really getting back into the face-to-face -face classes and they'd been listening to the news and when I was walking into the classrooms to tell them what was coming down the pipeline, um, I literally thought, oh no, when they, I walked into the classroom. So they, they, they want to be face-to-face, -face. Um, but they knew it was coming again. Um, so that was a challenge dealing with um, everyone's emotions, I think. How have you, uh, as an organization and yourself and your role, responded to those challenges and those developing challenges? So I think one of the biggest things we've done here um, that the students appreciate is um, a lot of communication. So every week I email all the students um, to see how they're doing. And I send them a questionnaire that's um, anonymous if they want it to be, if they want to follow up, they can add their email um, and just asking them for the good, the bad and the ugly. Um, and it's, it's really time consuming, <laughs> um, but it's really nice because the students feel like they have that outlet. Um, I had a conversation with a student this week who she just wanted to talk. So, you know, she knew that classes have to be online right now, um, but she felt a bit lonely because she missed the social interaction she just moved from Angola and left her husband in Angola. So she was, she was on her own and lonely and she just wanted that one-to-one. -one. So I think that communication with students has been really important, um, especially to keep their loyalty to the school. Um, and the teachers have been really on it with the students as well. Um, but the students really like, there's been so much, so much more back and forth communication with the teachers and the students than there had been in the past. Um, so that access has been really helpful for students. And in terms of the the feedback and the 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 both from the staff and from the students in the areas of the the academic approach, the health and safety issues, and then the general welfare, which I think you're kind of pointed to there. Mm -hmm. What were the things that they told you, which uh, informed how you developed the the the, the plan? So before we even opened back up, we sent all the students um, a survey. Um, and this was questions about every possibility that we could do when we open back up. Um, just to see what they thought. We did the same with the staff, and the, um, including the teachers um, and host families. So we had a lot of data from, from everybody about what they were willing and not willing to do. And um, we knew what we wanted to do, but we just wanted to make sure that, you know, the students wanted the same thing. And we wanted everybody socially distanced and, and wearing masks in the school for everybody's safety. And that's what the students wanted as well. Um, so the fact that we were all in line there was really helpful. Um, and also with the, with the weekly emails that I send and questionnaires that I've been sending the students, um, in week one, it was a special, 
we'd want to reopen it. It was a specialized um, questionnaire and asked what they appreciated about being back to school and they all pointed to safety. Um, I think that's everybody's concern these days. So it really helped us develop a structure. Um, and we were nervous that, you know, the one-way system wouldn't work and social distancing wouldn't work. Um, but all the students like followed followed the new rules from day one and we're happy to do so. So it's been really positive. One of the things that has been mentioned a lot is this sense of uh, the idea of community, uh, both a school community and the students being members of the wider community there where, where you are in Cork or wherever they might be. Is that something that, that has you have found to be a significant uh, factor? Yeah, I can actually share a photo too of some some community um, and I'll talk through this. It definitely has. Um, we really want the students to feel um, happy in class. So um, we had a social program that was face to face and really helped, you know, students love, but obviously that had to move online. Um, this picture here is the first day back, uh, the first Friday of the first week back in school. We just gave every, everybody some chocolate with cork written on it. Um, that nobody could eat in the school because they had their masks on. Um, but um, again, this is the smiling, if you can read their eyes. But here um, we have social programs in the school that we do um, in the afternoons. So it's, it's an online social program. It, sometimes it's a coffee and a chat. Um, sometimes it's playing Super Mario Kart. Sometimes it is um, a virtual tour somewhere. So that sense of community is definitely important for the students, um, but they still get to see people and communicate with people in a, in a later setting. Um, because we have, there is that element that was missing um, when we were face to face, um, because we didn't want students hanging around the school too much. Um, our, our common room wasn't available after classes. So that element of community was lost, but we were able to maintain it with an online version. And then apart from the ability to, to use uh, Zoom and those other kind of uh, tools, what would you say you've learned uh, from these challenges and trying to kind of tackle them and come up with solutions for them uh, that is going to stand to you? Um, you know, I think everyone was so nervous about teaching on Zoom a few months ago because nobody had really done it. It was something that was really, really new to everybody um, and the unknown. It is something that's always um, nerve wracking. And I think the way we approached it, um, that like unknown world, we're going to be online. I don't know what that's going to mean. Um, everybody was nervous. So communication with the, the students in a nervous way, communicating with the teachers, not being able to give them all the information that they, they wanted and needed um, compared to now, we know, we know where we stand. Um, so when, you know, luckily our numbers are going up. So I'm getting, you know, being able to bring more teachers back to work. And the difference in March when it was like, uh, here's Zoom, here's digital things, uh, good luck to here's Zoom, it's easy. All you need to do is this and here's the digital work. And it's, easy. you know, it's a different mindset and it's a different way of communicating. Um, and it, it just, it makes everything feel so much easier. Um, and everybody is is that much more at ease because of it, and uh, everybody's happy to help each other out more. And it's just a much it's a much calmer. We went from like being up here with wound up to just being calm, and everything's working wonderfully. That's what kind of uh, we, we've survived that. So anything else is exactly you know uh, nothing in comparison. Exactly. Uh, the last question then uh, I have for you is, how do you see the situation developing uh, uh, in the kind of medium to long term? And that would be like things that will stay with us and um, things that might go back to where they were uh, beforehand or new things that might uh, come come our way. Um, um, so I think digital is all staying here. Um, it's not going anywhere. Um, so we're still going to have Zoom classes. 
we're still going to have um, additional course books. Um, I think for the next few months, we're going to be going on to an opening and closing roller coaster. Um, I don't think that's going anywhere for a while either. Um, but I think we've all learned a, a whole new skill set on um, digital learning and digital teaching, which is um, really helpful. Um, so even though all of these things are going to stay with us, we'll have the ability to do more things and be able to offer different types of classes because of it. And what, what do you think when students are choosing a school now, what is the what is, what are the factors in their mind that might have been different might be different to what was there before? Well, I think I mean it's it's a it's a factor. It's a weird one because you know obviously the total immersion um, issue has has always been a selling point for schools being able to come to the country and live and and study here. Um, but it's also made it impossible for a group of students to be able to come because of maybe visa problems or monetary problems. Um, so on the one hand, we do have the ability to offer online classes to anybody anywhere in the world. It's also a problem because there's obviously more competition for that. Um, but also um, the feedback I think that we're getting from students about how everything is going um, now and that online is good and face-to-face -face is good. Um, it's, it's helpful for new students and returning students to know that regardless of the situation, they're going to be able to uh, get, get a good quality English course from it. Um, 